to prevent spreading of the virus, Ebola patients and suspected cases need to be transported in a safe way. Step 1. Prepare the team, equipment and ambulance. Assemble the team. Two hygienists, one medical worker, one health promoter, one driver. Load the equipment. Load and properly place the equipment in the ambulance. Start to left phone. Six set of PPE, including hygiene and cleaning gloves. Two sprayers with 0.5 chlorine solution. Mattress with plastic cover. Fender stretcher. In case the patient can't walk, something easier to disinfect to help the patient step into the back of the car if needed. Pocket for vomit. One liter hand sprayer with 0.05 chlorine. Thermometer. 10 ton plastic garbage bag. Hand soap. 1 kilogram of chlorine and 1 measuring spoon. 10 liter gallon filled with water to mix more chlorine if needed. Pocket with cover to keep protective items after use. Yellow pocket with cover for waste while the patient on their way to the treatment center. Weapon pad. Tape. Plastic cups. Food. ORS. One liter and an added one liter for each hour of transport. Bottle of water for each patient. Replace the items immediately after news. The equipment must always be ready to be news. The ambulance. The driver should check that the ambulance is in good condition and has enough fuel. The driver needs to know the procedure. Make sure the driver has enough drink and food. The patient will be transported in a different car to the team. Step 2. Boarding of the patient into the car. When you arrive in the community, the health promoter will get out of the car to confirm whether the patient transport will go on. All others must remain in the car until confirmed. The driver shall stay in the car the whole time. The health promoter shall wear normal clothes and be accessible for the community. They shall keep a safe distance of 2 meters from the patient. They do not need PPE. The health promoter will explain to the family and community the steps in transporting the patient. Transfer of a person can lead to highly emotional and tense situations. Explain the reasons to the family and the community to avoid misunderstandings and mistrust. We assure and comfort the patient so they are psychologically well prepared. Explain what is available in the ambulance, food, water, ORS, and there is bucket for vomit. Encourage the patient to drink as much ORS as possible. There are two ways of transporting the patient. One, the patient can walk along with all help as the patient to move into the back of the ambulance. The patient must not touch the ulcer of the ambulance. There is no need to wear PPE if the patient will not be touched and the team can keep a safe distance of 2 meters. 2. The patient is too weak to walk. At least 3 people dress in 4 PPE, 2 to assist the patient and 1 sprayer. 4 people if a stretcher is needed. Move the patient and secure inside the ambulance. Dress into PPE in front of the community. If the patient is heavy, more people need to wear PPE. Do not touch the driver's side of the car while wearing PPE. Only touch the other side of the car if absolutely necessary. Once the patient is in the ambulance, disinfect the back of the ambulance, close and disinfect the door using 0.5 chlorine. Step 3. Transport of the patient. The driver should stay in the driving seat and not have any interaction with the patient or the back of the car. One person shall assist the driver with a spare set of PPE. Step 4. Removing the patient. 
informed the Ebola treatment center of the departure town in the town of Erabo. The treatment center team will move the patient and manage the waste and disinfection. Before opening the doors, they will spray the back of the ambulance with 0.5 chlorine. If the patient can walk, he or she will be asked to move out of the ambulance without catching the OSA. Wear PPE if the patient requires assistance to move and also when going inside to remove any items such as buckets, containing vomit, garbage, any other items. Step 5. Disinfection of the ammonite. After removing the patient, the back of the ammonite will be completely washed and sprayed by a team of two hygienists. First, the back of the ammonite to the back step, then the inside. The steps in cleaning the ambulance are spray the back of the ambulance, focus on the door, handles, other places patients may have touched, and back step. Open back doors of the ambulance. To touch anything touched by the patient, wear examination gloves, spray the gloves before removal. Spray the inside of the bag with 0.5 chlorine first. Spray any waste or fluids left inside the ambulance. Then put all waste and any rubbish from the car into the garbage bag. Close garbage bag. Spray it and place it in waste zone. Thoroughly spray the entire inside of the ambulance, roof, walls, stretchers, floor, inside of the doors. Remove the stretcher and mattress. This effect and allow it to dry. Thoroughly wash the inside of the ambulance with fresh water. Be very careful not to waste forcibly or to use more amount of water. Close back doors of the ammonite. In any other place the patient may have touched, carefully wash the back side of the ambulance with clean water. Spray the area where the disinfection has taken place once the ambulance leaves. Close and spray the gate to the high risk area. Replace all items immediately after use. The equipment must always be ready to use.